Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the various accounts that you might see when you look at a company's balance sheet. And I'll talk about those accounts and kind of the terminology that goes with them so that hopefully by the time I finish this lecture, um, you'll have a better sense of if you look at a company's balance sheet, you kind of know what you're looking at. Now, to start off with, let's just recap. There are five main types of accounts that companies use when recording business transactions. You see them listed here, revenues, expense, assets, liabilities, stockholders, equity. When we talk about the balance sheet, what we're really talking about is these last three right here, assets, liabilities, and stockholders, equity. Those are the three types of accounts that will show up on a company's balance sheet and the company will organize them into those buckets. They'll put all the assets together, all the liabilities together, all the stockholders' equity together. Now, we're gonna deep dive into these three types and then I'll give you some examples of what goes in there. But first and foremost, let me just start by talking just briefly about what exactly the balance sheet tells you about a company. A balance sheet, as the name would imply, balance sheet, tells you the balances in all of the company's asset liability and equity accounts. Now, if we think about what these represent, assets in the most simplest form are um, items the company owns. And typically you see um, when this is defined, it can't just be something that you own that's necessarily worthless, it's also gotta have value to it. So um, we can think of this as something you own that brings future value. So that's the asset category. Liabilities are the opposite of that. Those are things that the company owes to others. So items company owes others. So you can think of this as a future loss of value or a, a, a more kind of concrete way to think of that is a future sacrifice of your assets, the things that have value that you own. Now, that's the two main things, assets, liabilities, things you own, things you owe others. Stockholders equity represents then the investor's interest in the company. So I'm gonna write that first, and I know that's kind of abstract, and you might be thinking, what is investor's interest? It's the investor's interest in the company. Now, when we talk about investors, investors own the company. So any profits that the company generates, any value the company has, all of that belongs to the investors. And so when we talk about the investors' interest in the company, what we're really talking about is um, stockholders' equity represents the net worth of the company. And if you think about it in terms of net worth, like what are the investors entitled to, you might also realize that the net worth of the company is simply what does the company own less what does the company owe others? In other words, another way to think of that is SE equals A minus L. Now, you won't often see it like that, um, SE equals A minus L. In fact, more often than not, what you will actually see is this written as A equals L plus SE. And this right here, assets equals liabilities plus shareholders' equity, that's what's known as the basic accounting equation. Now, of course, this is simply an algebraic conversion of what we just talked about, SE equals A minus L. What you own minus what you owe others represents the net worth of the company or what the investors are entitled to, okay? So now that we've established that, assets are things you own, liabilities, things you owe, shareholders' equity represents the net worth of the company, I already said, when we think about the balance sheet, as the name implies, we are talking about what are the balances in all of these accounts. What that's really telling investors is what is the financial health of the company, specifically at a point in time. In other words, at some specific point in time, typically a quarter or year end, what are the balances in your assets? What are the balances in your liabilities? What is the net worth of the company? How financially stable are you? Do you own more than you owe? Is your net worth positive? So forth and so on.
All right, so now that we've got all that laid out, let's talk about some of the accounts that you're gonna see under these classifications and what those accounts are, just so when you look at a balance sheet, you have a better understanding of that balance sheet. First and foremost, um, in asset section, pretty much every company, you're gonna see cash, or you might see this called cash and cash equivalents or something of that nature. It's what it sounds like. It's literally the cash of the company, it does not have to be in physical bills. It can be bills, coins, deposits in banks, checks that haven't been cashed yet, so forth and so on, right? But any variation of something that is essentially a representation of cash shows up in the cash line of the balance sheet. You might see investments. Now, this could be equity investments or debt investments, but these are basically when one company invests in another company. This represents the worth of that investment you're gonna see something called receivables. Now there's multiple types of receivables. Um, the most prominent one that you'll probably see is what's called accounts receivable, but you might also see something called like notes receivable or interest receivable, so forth and so on. There are, there are others, um, but I'll keep it basic here. A receivable is basically something that someone else owes you. So when someone owes you, say money, um, that essentially is a, a right that you own. You own the right to collect that money, and that money has future value. So that is considered an asset. When it's in the normal course of business, that's what we call accounts receivable. So uh, company A sells a good to company B, and company B agrees to pay later. Company A would have a receivable from company B for, for what company B owes them. Um, Notes receivable are a little bit more formal. These are kind of written debt agreements. Interest receivable is what it sounds like. Someone owes you interest for lending them money. And as I said, there's many other receivables, but, but this is kind of the basics for you. Um, you're gonna see maybe supplies in the event that a company actually keeps supplies on hand, and that's exactly what it sounds like. Things like pens, paper, copier, ink, et cetera, right? These are just supplies that companies use. They have value, they get used up you might see inventory. Now the distinction between inventory and supplies is supplies is something the company uses up. Inventory is a product that the company sells to a customer. So that's why you'll see those as two different line items. You will see what we call um, PP&E. PP&E stands for property, plant, and equipment. And so typically what you're gonna see in this kind of PP&E category are things like buildings, land, equipment, and anything of that nature, okay? So these are big, physical, tangible assets that companies have. They have value. Companies use them over a long-term basis. They fall under this kind of subcategory called PP&E. Um, and, and so, as you can see, they're, they're something the company owns, and they, and they do generate value, essentially. Um, you're also going to have a classification of assets that's known as the intangibles. So as the name implies here, intangibles suggest something that can't be touched, it doesn't have physical form. So these are various legal rights that a company might have, including things like copyrights, or trademarks, or patents, things of that nature, okay? So um, that just gives you a general sense of kind of the most basic things that you might see in a company's asset section. Now, companies have their own terminology, so you might see some of these words, or you might see similar words that you could equate to these. Know that not every company uses the exact same phrases, um, so you might have to adapt when, you, when you're reading any given company's balance sheet. But those are kind of the basics of assets. Now, let's talk about liabilities for a minute. Um, the biggest thing with liabilities um, is what we call the payable, okay? Now, you might be saying, well, wait a minute, we just talked about something called a receivable. Payable sounds like it's related to that. And if you are thinking that, you would be right, because a payable is the other side of the receivable transaction. I said a receivable is when one company is, is owed money by another company, well, a payable is if you're the company that owes, right? Receivable is, hey, we're the company that's gonna collect the money. Payable is we're the company that owes the money. And that makes sense with liabilities, items you owe to others. And the reason I say payables is kind of the main thing to think about when you think about liabilities is because there's so many payables out there. You can have, literally, 
an account payable. So just like accounts receivable is money that's due to you in the normal course of business, account payable is money you owe others in the normal course of business. You can have a note payable. You could have a bond payable. Now, again, notes are more formal written debt agreements, but in this case, you're the one that owes the money. Bond payable is a debt instrument that you issue in open markets. But again, you owe somebody money eventually because you're, you're basically borrowing money. You could have interest payable. So instead of you being the one collecting interest, you owe the interest. You could have rent payable. If you say owe, um, or, uh, you have a bill due for rent, you could have um, utilities payable. If you owe a bill for, say, your gas, your electric, your water, salaries and wages payable. Um, if you owe your employees money that hasn't been paid out yet, this is very typical um, that you owe your employees money because uh, often the, uh, the the work week does not align with the with the pay cycle. So, so they work, but then they get paid like a week or so later um, and so forth and so on. If you're familiar at all with the idea of revenues and expenses, what you might be noticing here is a lot of these things I'm mentioning, interest, rent, utilities, salaries and wages, all of those things can be expenses. Those are costs to the company. And that's kind of something to keep in mind when it comes to payables. I'll put dot, dot, dot here, and I'll say pretty much any unpaid expense. Basically, companies incur costs for things. Now, they might pay on the spot, or they might get invoiced and pay later. And anytime you're in an invoice and pay later situation, you are going to create a payable representing that you owe that money until the day it gets paid. So pretty much any expense that you haven't paid yet can be a payable. I'm going to stop listing them off here. I think I've given you several to think about. Um, but know that, that this list goes on and on and on and on. Now, one liability that I have to point out, because it is a kind of a special liability that you've got to just know what it means to understand it, and that is unearned revenue. Now, this one's interesting because you'll notice the word revenue is in the name, but here's the deal. That unearned, whenever you see that word unearned, that trumps the word revenue. What this is saying is you are getting money for something that you do. In other words, you're going to earn revenue, but you haven't earned it yet. So the idea here of this being a liability is you got paid in advance. And in fact, I'm going to write that next to this just so that um, you can equate the two. If you ever see something called cash advance, you received a cash advance for something that you're going to do. Well, that cash, that's going to be money earned at some point. That's going to be revenue at some point. But it, it requires you to do the job first. And so until you get the job done, you have to put a liability called unearned revenue on your balance sheet that says not you owe money because you don't owe money to somebody, but you owe a job to somebody, okay? And this always happens when you get paid in advance, but you haven't done the work yet. So I want you to memorize that one because that one's a tricky one. A lot of people see revenue and they immediately think, oh, that's revenue. Put that on the income statement. But unearned revenue is a liability representing cash you collected but which you have not done the job for yet. So you still owe a service. You owe somebody something. All right. That brings us now to stockholders' equity. So stockholders' equity, representing the investor's interest in the company or another way to think about it, net worth of the company. Um, the biggest things that you're going to see in here is basically any stock that you've issued to investors. So you're going to see things like common stock, things like preferred stock, these are stocks that you can issue to your investors. Um, they have their own nuances to them, but I'm not going to go into that here. Just know that they're just different types of stock investors can buy from you. You might also see treasury stock. Treasury stock is when you buy some of your stock back from investors, and so you're keeping it in the company's treasury. You're going to see retained earnings. Now, that's another one of those tricky ones that when you see that, you may not understand what it is unless you're familiar with the term. Retained earnings represents 
all of the income that you have earned since the start of forming your company that you have not yet given back to the investors. In other words, it's the earnings of the company that have been retained inside the company rather than given back to the investors who are the true owners of it, okay? So that's what retained earnings is. Um, you might also see something called additional paid in capital. Um, this is often abbreviated APIC. Additional paid in capital just represents excess money you receive upon the issuance of stock due to market forces. Again, I'm not going to get into the nuances of that here. I just want you to be aware of kind of what it is if you come across it. Right? It's excess money that you've received as part of issuing stock in the open market. Um, you might also see something called accumulated other comprehensive income. And this is often abbreviated AOCI. Now, this is a special account here. Um, basically, these are things that are revenues or expenses that due to the way accounting rules are established cannot be put on the income statement yet. And so the why it shows up here is essentially because these things will eventually affect the income statement, you know, they will become revenue or expense. Um, you've got to show the, the investors. you got to say, hey, investors, um, this stuff isn't in our earnings yet, our income statement yet, um, but it, it will affect um, the net worth of the company. It will affect your interest in the company. And so you, you temporarily put it here in this shareholders equity section. So if you ever see accumulated other comprehensive income, that's what that's referring to. It's, it's basically revenues and expenses that can't be put on the income statement yet. Again, I won't go into the nuances of that now. This is more of an, an overview that we're doing here. All right, so um, that's it. I think that gives you a good feel um, for the various things that you might see on the balance sheet. Remember, the goal of all of these accounts is to say, what does the company own? What do they owe others? Therefore, what is their net worth? Or in other words, what is the financial health of the company at the given point in time at which you grab the balances in, in all of these accounts? All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.